Okay. It's a pleasure to be here with so many passionate people. I've spent the last 20 years of my life researching and sharing information linked to um, the links between soil health, human health, and planetary health, and I'll continue with that sharing here today. I was about two weeks, or three or four weeks ago actually, I was on the steps of, of City Hall in LA speaking to a large group of climate change activists. And following that talk, uh, I got flooded with people, many of them asking the same question. They were asking, what was that word? And I immediately assumed that they were referring to a word that I'd used called mycorrhizal, which is really something of a spelling bee special. But to my surprise, the word they were seeking was the word humus. And for someone who is so passionate about the subject, as you'll soon learn, uh, it was something of a shock to realise that people have become so divorced from the source of their food that they weren't even familiar with the word. And this is people who are trying to save the planet. And so we'll begin by talking about what is humus. Um, interestingly, if we look at the etiology of this word, we find that the words humus and human mean the same thing. They mean of and for the earth. And interestingly, the word humility means exactly the same thing. And ironically, it's our lack of humility that has seen us in our constant quest to master nature that has really um, brought us pretty much to the brink. So humus uh, is the... It's made by microorganisms, and it's the home base in which those microorganisms, these incredibly important creatures, live. Humus is the soil glue that determines whether our rivers run brown following a rain event. Humus is the soil glue that determines whether dust storms strip our thin veil of precious topsoil, as we saw uh, in Australia a few short years ago when the Opera House turned red. Humus is the storage system for three incredibly important substances, carbon, water, and minerals. And it will be this trio that will have most impact on soil, plant, animal, human and planetary health in the very near future. Now, we work with farmers in 44 countries, and I can tell you one thing for certain. Those practicing conventional chemical agriculture are losing humus on a yearly basis, and we're checking that with soil tests. Those that are practicing biological organic farming are building humus on a yearly basis. We need to look after the people that are doing the right thing. Now that we're starting to do a lot more counts of soil life, the discovery has been really quite alarming. We find that the key creatures responsible for building humus in our soil have been absolutely decimated. The most important of those creatures is a creature called mycorrhizal fungi. So here's this little creature that burrows into the plant root, that expands out and gives you tenfold increase in that root surface area, and this massive root extension mines minerals and takes them to the plant. It holds, and holds moisture, and it produces biochemicals that stimulate the plant's immune system so that we don't have to come in with so much chemicals uh, control on, the, on that plant. Now, <coughs> sorry. Um, sorry, I'll just keep moving here. Uh, mycorrhizal fungi are responsible for 30%. This is a new finding. This is a woman called Sarah Wright who discovered that this creature produces a sticky substance called glomelin. And glomelin, it turns out, is the spark for the building of humus in the soil. And we now know that this one creature is responsible for 30% of all of that humus. And we also know that we've only got 10% of this creature left. We've knocked out 90% from our soils. We can put them back. $10 a hectare it costs to re-inoculate them. We can also brew up the other cellulose digesting, humus-forming organisms, for $5 a hectare. There's something that can be done, and it needs to be done really quickly. And then we've put this workforce back in the soil. We need to legislate to protect these guys in the soil. What's knocking them around? Farm chemicals, we now know, are really harsh on this, these critically important humus-building organisms. We know that herbicides, or some of the herbicides, are actually more harsh on soil life than they are on plants. We know that glyphosate, the world's most widely used chemical, the new research suggests it's something of a horror show for soil life. And then we've got other things where over-cultivating in many instances and slicing and dicing up those fungi that build humus. We need to put a carbon source with every nitrogen-based fertiliser. 
So we're talking here about nitrogen being the biggest, most widely used chemical in agriculture or, or mineral in agriculture. It leaches. It leaches very readily. We put carbon with it, certain forms of carbon. It stabilises. So we don't have nitrates in our waterway, which are a carcinogen, and we don't have nitrogen on the reef and so forth. Uh, nitrogen also stimulates bacteria in the soil, and this is the most abundant creature in the soil, and bacteria are going to hyperdrive after a feed of nitrogen, and they consume carbon. It's actually the major way that we lost so much of our humus from the soil was not understanding this. We need to put carbon with our fertilisers. It can be compost, it can be a material called humates. Humates are this uh, sort of like a humus concentrate that we can extract from brown coal, and humates Humic acid, one of those concentrates, uh, turns out to be the most powerful known stimulant of, of cellulose digesting or humus building fungi. So it's a hugely important, indispensable humus building tool. Now, what we're looking up at here uh, is Norfolk Island, one of my favourite places on the, in the world. Uh, and on the left is a little workshop where we dug up a lawn, uh, we put in some humus, we put in some vermicompost. Uh, we put in minerals, uh, mycorrhizal fungi, uh, mulched the area, and came back exactly four weeks later, and we're looking at an amazing food garden with food with forgotten flavours, increased medicinal qualities, and so forth. We need to redefine what determines profitability in agriculture. And so they did a quite a comprehensive study for three years. The end result surprised everyone. The determinant of profitability in agriculture was humus, was how much organic matter you had. Every 0.15% made a significant increase and your profitability. Humus is our greatest water management tool. We're talking about three quarters of the earth covered in water and 3% of that water is fresh. And of that 3%, 90% is used for irrigation, but it's not used very smartly. We store our water in huge dams. I'll go back here, I'm just going to get this. In huge dams with massive amounts of evaporation. We pump that water with a large carbon footprint to the farm and we pump it out and lose more through evaporation during the irrigation process. Compare that to humus. Humus holds its own weight in water. Humus is beneath the ground, so it can't evaporate. The plant root takes it as it needs it. A 1% increase in organic matter per hectare results in 170,000 litres of water that can be stored in that soil that couldn't previously. This, and this, this mat, which is two square metres, 34 litres, we can now store. That's, there's no better way to manage water than that. Humus also has a massive impact upon the nutritional value of our food. There are numerous studies now that have quantified lots of minerals in our food. There is an argument that the food we're consuming currently contains just 20% of the nutrition found in the food consumed by our grandparents. And a large part of that is the soil. We're, we are what we eat. What we eat comes from the soils, and the soils are a shadow of their former self. A big part of that decimation of our soil is a loss of humus. Humus is the only thing that holds all minerals. It stores all minerals in the soil, and humus is the home base for the organisms that deliver the minerals. There is a microbe behind every mineral. Hum humus or microbes are the bridge between the soil and the plant, literally. We build the humus, we build the nutrient density, we build the health of every one of us. Humus also reduces contam chemical contamination of our soils. Um, we're seeing constantly that the higher the humus levels, the less, less the need for chemical intervention. We're talking about various issues in relation to the chemical contaminants on our food. Bioaccumulation, we're talking about the thing called the cocktail effect. The bottom line is our need for chemicals is based upon, you know, a fungal, a, a fungal disease is not a deficiency of a fungicide. We're looking at a plant that didn't have the mineral base and didn't have the microbe base to otherwise protect itself. We build the humus, we change that. Humus is also the storage system for nitrate and nitrogen. Our, waters, our, our drinking water even is contaminated with that carcinogen. Humus is the only thing in the soil that can store it. It's also a carbon filter which isolates heavy metals and chemi chemical residues and keeps them from us. It plays a huge role in soil structure. Here we see uh, some vermicompost added here to the soil. You couldn't push a penetrometer more than this far into the soil. Six weeks later, you can push it to its hilt. The soil can now breathe. Uh, the soil can produce nutrient-dense food uh, with forgotten flavours and a lot more medicinal qualities. So, in conclusion, humus is literally the lifeblood of this planet and we've used and abused this magical substance to the point that our very future is at stake. When we take, build humus in the soil, we reclaim carbon from the atmosphere. We increase the health of, of soil life, of plants and of animals. 
we improve the management of precious water, we increase the vitality and resilience of every last one of us, we need to return to that ancient wisdom that saw the definition of humus and human as being of and for the earth. And we need to reclaim the humility to work with nature rather than this constant battle and the constant striving to master her. And each and every one of us can help save the day with humus. Thank you. Thank you, Peter.